Oh. Excelsior. Hey, we're live. Look at that. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live with Dr. Ken Berry, family physician, and Nisha Solis hyphen Berry, registered nurse, certified breastfeeding consultant, and some other stuff too. What you got one more, don't you? Certified health coach. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She just keeps adding them initials. Too many initials. No, there's never too many. There's never too many, right? You guys sit back, relax, get out your meat skins and your bacon, and we're going to talk about godly things this evening. We watch Nacho Libre at Christmas, and we start quoting Nacho Libre yeah. excessively around this time of year. So Sorry about that. Don't mind us. Yeah. If you hear a, a stray Nacho Libre quote, that's why. Hey, Natalie Stone. Hey, everybody. Don't forget to invite to remind your Uncle Elmer and Aunt Hattie that we're live right now. You know, they always forget it and miss it and have to watch the replay. So send them a text right now, direct message, or you're welcome to share this on your favorite social media right now. If jammer, you Jammer says too many commercials. Sell, sell, sell. We're not really in charge of that. That's yep. YouTube. So That's YouTube doing that. We yeah, don't take it up with them. We don't pick the commercials. They put them on there. Yep. What I love is when they... Uh, advertise m ms or Coca-Cola to you guys, and you're like, uh, no. I love it when they waste their money like that. Hey, Marsha, how's it going? There's Lisa all the way from Arizona. Where are you guys watching from? What city, what state, what country? Where are you at? Max, hey, Max. Ask Nurse Cindy is in the chat. Oh, Ask Nurse Cindy. One of our awesome moderators, but also awesome on her own. That's She's all just of awesome. our moderators are, honestly. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> Look, Lacey says you are glowing, and I totally agree. Oh, thank you. Totally agree, Lacey. I was just saying that before we went live, and she rolled her eyes at me. So maybe she'll believe it from you. It's all makeup. Underneath this, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> How do you really look under the makeup? Give like a, a tired mom like, of a three-year-old and a teething infant. That's what I look like. There's Aaron right up the road in Centerville, Tennessee. Hey, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Absolutely. We got all kinds of people from all kinds of places, all interested in a proper human diet. You ready to answer some questions? Yes. If you're new here and you see a name that's blue with a wrench beside of it, in that's the one comments. of our trusty moderators. Uh, they will be helping ask some beginner questions. So if you see an answer from them, listen, they know what they're talking about. Absolutely. That is right. They are also all part of our private community. And you know what the Christmas coming. And is it the, Christmas? All the get togethers <laughs> and all the parties and all the stuff. The video I just posted today about how to break your junk food habit addiction one of the tips was you need a tribe you need a community you at least need a buddy and so if you'd like to join a growing community of over 1700 people now who really take the food they eat seriously and are also eager to help you break addictions you might want to check out our community there's a link down in the show notes all right <clears throat> Uh, Edmund, what is a good chicken thigh marinade? I like to use the Primal Kitchen Italian dressing. They've got really good clean ingredients. It's a little pricey, uh, but a little goes a long way, and it really does a good job to marinate the chicken. That's what I like, but you can also do like make your own Italian dressing with some vinegar, olive oil, and Italian seasoning, salt, garlic, all that good stuff. So you can make your own. I'm sure if you Google keto chicken thigh marinade, a ton of really good recipes will pop up. Yep. Uh, but just pay attention to the ingredients list. All about the ingredients. Yeah. Absolutely. Kendrick says, have you watched the documentary Died Suddenly? And if so, what do you think? If you hadn't, can you? And maybe do a video on it. So, yes, Kendrick, I have you watched have. this uh, documentary. Uh, I actually, it was recommended to me by Brett Weinstein. Uh, he did a video about it. And so I checked it out. Uh, there are some things in this video that are concerning, but there's also a lot of conspiratorial fluff that if, if this is really something real and something that's happening that undertakers are seeing, they should have just focused on that and not added all the 9-11 and all the other stuff because it just makes it feel like a, another conspiracy documentary. But you guys check it out. Died Suddenly. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's on Rumble but it might be on other places as well and ignore all the stuff up front and just focus on what the undertakers are talking about. If it's real, it's a big damn deal. 
Angela, I'm new. Do you have a cookbook? Angela, wow. it's funny, <laughs> it's funny right that. that you should say that. Uh, me and Kim Howerton put our holiday cookbook in. You can get a digital copy or a real copy. We This is our second year doing it. There's several new recipes. I think like 12 new recipes in this one. And there's a physical copy this year. So this is the cookbook that we have so far. I know a lot of you got it and appreciate your support. Uh, we put a lot of work into this. I did. Writing recipes is not easy. And it, honestly, it's not that much fun. <laughs> but uh, we're really proud to have this. And there, it, it is keto for those of you. I know people ask because it just says holiday cookbook. I guess we should have threw keto on the cover. But I you feel know it's like got to have keto on the that. label. I got, to, I got to put it on there. But, but there's yes, a link down is. in the show notes. Okay, uh, holiday yeah, cookbook. Yeah, there. you can check it out. All right. Let's see. Pat. Hey, Pat. Thoughts on sunscreen. Family wants me to start for skincare. I don't get sunburned, but it's hard to argue with the results, with their results when they use it. Yeah. So definitely you should never, you should try to never get a sun sunburn. And so what we typically do when we've had enough sun is we start putting on loose fitting shirts and big floppy hats, or we get under the umbrella, or we just go indoors. Uh, there is a place for sunscreen. If you're going to be out in the sun just for hours baking and you have no choice, then you probably should use some kind of sunscreen. To, but just to blindly, thoughtlessly slather it all over you and your children who have very, very thin skin and tend to absorb chemicals much more readily than adults, I would think twice about that. Um, I've got videos about the sun. I actually have a, a chapter in my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, about the sun and how it can't possibly cause skin cancer. Karen, why are there different types of magnesium and how do you choose which one to take? So there are many different formulations and it's typically magnesium something because you have to attach the magnesium to a, a molecule to increase the absorption. The worst one out there is the one your doctor will prescribe, which is magnesium oxide. And it's not dangerous. It, you just don't absorb it. You just poop it out. And so it doesn't really help raise your magnesium to any meaningful level. Uh, some people love magnesium citrate. This is the magnesium that's in keto chow's electrolyte drops. For some people, that tends to give them diarrhea. And so they stick to something more like magnesium glycinate. And there's many, many others that you can find. Uh, the only one that I just wouldn't waste money on is magnesium oxide. Sorry, Pat. Already. already got you. Oh, Nedra. Nedra, thank you. Thank you so much. AJ says, been ketovore since June. I've noticed how soft and smooth my skin is. I'm looking young for 55. Yeah, awesome. so in regards to the previous sunscreen question, it's kind of cool that when you give your body the food it actually needs to make beautiful, healthy, younger-looking skin, it kind of does that by default. Oh, thank you, Paul. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom. Thank you. Uh, watch a place that's struggling to get back into keto carnivore right now. Uh, that's another you need to being on this live is a good step because you're surrounded by people in the comments. And of course, us that can support you. Uh, we're doing a keto challenge in the private group starting in January. So if anybody wants to join that, it's just five dollars to join. It's included if you're already a member. So you guys that are in there. Oh, members get it for free. You get it already. Sweet. Yes. Chapter and verse. Merry Christmas and thanks for everything. Oh, y'all are very, Merry very Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Gary, how do I tell if my insulin resistance is getting better? Do you recommend using a ketone meter? So you can get some degree of information about your insulin metabolism health by using a uh, ketone meter that checks your blood. The best way is to get, you know, when you go see your doctor, get a hemoglobin A1C a fasting insulin and or a C peptide check, because these are going to tell you everything you need to know about your glucose and insulin metabolism. All right. Visual mathematics. Ooh, are Ooh. you a teacher? I feel like you are. Uh, on keto for seven months with major improvement of type 2 diabetes, acid reflux, arthritis, allergies, sleep, and weight. I'm 75 year old with moderate hearing loss and hearing aids. With keto, will I see improvement in my hearing? It totally depends on the cause of your hearing loss. If your hearing loss is from chronic inappropriate inflammation, 
in your cochlea and in the auditory nerve, then you may notice some improvement in your hearing. But if it's from previous damage, if it's from a chemical damage, there's a long list of drugs your doctor can prescribe that could actually permanently damage your hearing. And that kind of damage, we don't think you can come back from that. But uh, I hope the best and keep us updated on your progress. I love what you've been doing so far. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Holly. Thank Thanks, you, Diana. Diana. Thank you, Christy. You are so sweet. Oh, Patricia has become a member ah, of your welcome, family. Welcome, Patricia. Welcome, welcome. I mean, family. <laughs> My YouTube, YouTube family. family. Yeah. yeah. Shannon, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, I just turned on my YouTube uh, memberships, and if, if that's just another way that you can support the work we do. If you want to do that, that's fine. If not, totally not required. Definitely not required. Uh, Diane, you can find the cookbook link in the description below this video. Yep, it's down in the show notes of this video. It yes. says Holiday Cookbook. All right. Um, I got a good question over here. All right, let's hear it. Latha? <coughs> Why is Dr. Berry a carnivore and Nisha keto? She said keto. I'm ketovore. So yeah. good I, question though. He's carnivore because I fatten very easily. Uh back in the day before I knew about a proper human diet, I weighed 297 pounds and I was pre-diabetic. So I tend to get fat really easily and I tend to develop pre-diabetes very easily. And so I have to keep my carbohydrates as close to zero as I possibly can. And that keeps me feeling good. Um Keeps all my labs good and hopefully keeps me looking good. I don't know. You look pretty good. Okay. 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 And then Nisha has never, now she gained quite a bit of weight before her Hashimoto's was uncovered and diagnosed, but she's never been fat. She's never been diabetic. She's never had any of those kind of metabolic problems. Her, her issues that she had because of a shitty diet were more autoimmune and more chronic inflammation. So she doesn't have to eat zero carb, even though many days she does. So I eat ketovore and like just a really quick thing is I eat carnivore most of the time, but then on the days when I want to have something else that I know doesn't affect me, like some cheese, some onions, garlic, seasoning, sauces, things that I know because I've done the work, don't inflame me or cause me any problems, then I eat those things because I can. I don't have to be carnivore and I don't think Everyone has to be carnivore. I totally agree. I, but this this is a common theme I see across the internet that you think carnivore is the only way, mm -mm. and somehow I, I just am ignoring you. <laughs> no, not at all. And so what I espouse and advise is a proper human diet spectrum. Up here, some people can maybe eat 100 total grams of carbs a day and do just great, but they need to be real carbs, real food. Some people need to come into 50 total grams a day. Some people need to come to 20. Some need to come to 10, that's ketovore. And then some need to get as close to zero as possible, which is carnivore. So, Natalie, yes. So the carnivore challenge is in January and a carnivore, ketovore challenge in January. Carnivore will follow that as an elimination diet challenge to help those of you who want to figure out mm -hmm. what foods affect you and things like that. And that you brought up a good point. So carnivore, there's two reasons you might do it. If you fatten very easily, if you're a severe type 2 diabetic, if you have sky high blood pressure, if you have metabolic syndrome, if you have Dunlap or your belly Dunlapped over your belt, then you probably need to at least start with carnivore. You may not stay there. You may drift back to ketovore or keto. But if you've always been slender and you you don't you maybe hold a little extra weight, but it's not terrible, then you you probably will do great with keto. And so I'm not a, a carnivore only guy. I'm a proper human diet spectrum kind of guy. I see that all the time. Dr. Berry, how can you wife not eat carnivore? Yeah, yeah, she doesn't need to. Patricia, can oxalates cause gout in other joints than feet like shoulder joints? Gout can technically be in almost any joint in your body. By far the most common joint is the is where your big toe joins your foot. And next would be ankle, next would be knee. But you can theoretically have gout in any joint. But just because you have ache and pain and stiffness, that doesn't mean it's gout. Yeah, there's more to the diagnosis than that. Christian, my wife has extreme eczema, which flares up, and we have lost two pregnancies late. Uh, sometimes she's bedridden. I'm wondering if you have helped 100%. any patients with the yeah. carnivore diet for eczema. Yeah, many people, when they go whole food keto, no products, no, no processed crap, just real food. So keto basically is fatty meat, eggs with the yolk, some veg, a few nuts, and a few berries. That's what keto is. 
not some weird fad diet. It's the thing we've been eating for millions of years. Uh, but for somebody, if she has bad eczema and she wants to clear it up as quickly as possible, she needs, she needs to 100% do 90 days of nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Okay. And I promise you, you might think, well, that's ridiculous. How's that going to help? Just, just have her do it for 90 days. She can eat as much as she wants. She can eat as often as she wants. If she's hungry, eat. If she's not hungry, don't eat. And after that 90 days, you'll have trouble finding the eczema. Rachel, 28 weeks pregnant. Congratulations. I failed my one-hour glucose. OB wants a three-hour. I've been ketovore for four weeks. I asked for CGM. OB said no. Levels are fine with at-home uh, prick test thoughts. It will be fine with a prick test. I mean, essentially, it's, that's the same thing. Yeah, but yeah. she should be fine with giving you a CGM. <clears throat> because you're going to have to prick your finger four, five, six times a yeah. day to give her the information she needs. Why not just give you a CGM? That's silly. And then the three-hour test, that, that's fine to do that three-hour test. She's following really the kind of the old 1980s guidelines of, of do the one hour. If you fail that, do the three hour. But if you have a normal A1C and your blood sugars at home on your C continuous glucose monitor, if they're all great, then you obviously don't have gestational diabetes. Natalie's joining the Ketovore Challenge. Yep. All right, Gary. <coughs> <clears throat> Go for it. Gary's got some recent first-time tests to see peptide was 3.05. Excellent. Fasting insulin 12, still a little too high. Uh, thyroid T3 up to 34, T4 8.3, T4, free T4 2.8. Last A1C 7.2, up from 6.0. Any insights from those numbers? Yeah, first of all, you're still eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology, Gary. That's exactly what's causing the fasting insulin to be high, and that's what's causing your, you to still be a type 2 diabetic. You can totally reverse those. Gary would be, just looking at his profile picture, if that's really him, he would be an excellent candidate for 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs because he, he t obviously gets diabetes very easily. He probably tends to put on weight pretty easily. He needs as close to zero carb as he can possibly get. He may need to stay there forever, or he may be able to, once he reversed all this, he may be able to go back to ketovore or even carnivore. Thank you, Steve. Hey, thanks, Steve. Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Doc. What you think about keto bricks in the stockings this year? <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know what keto bricks are, they're a really clean keto. It's a it's a big thick bar. Uh, I think it's got a thousand calories in it. It's it's predominantly fat and protein. He uses good quality ingredients. Our good friend Robert Sykes. He actually owns the company and he watches like a hawk the ingredients that go in it. If you are a long-term fisherman, like you go out fishing for days, or you're a hiker, or you're a hunter that like goes off the reservation for a week to hunt elk or something, or if you're an over-the-road truck driver or something like that, where you literally, you need some nutrition with you, and you don't have access to fast food, keto bricks are way the hell better than Snicker bars and Doritos. They're made for people who do bodybuilding. They're mm -hmm. compact, easy to eat, he calls it the perfect uh, macro brick. Basically, he built it for bodybuilders. So if you're not a bodybuilder or you're not just needing something that's shelf stable, yeah, probably don't need these. There's nothing they're, magic about them. They're very big. Like I cannot bite into one, but a lot of people, especially during the holidays, will melt them down, yes. put them in candy molds, and make little chocolates with them. And I think that's that's an the excellent way, way to yes, use them to take a keto dessert. And don't tell them it's keto when you take it to the Christmas party. Just be like, I made these little chocolate angels for you guys and let them scarf them up. And then when they don't raise their blood sugar, they can just thank you. It's thank also you, pretty Madeline. tasty. Carney girl, hubby had esophageal cancer in 2003 after chemo and radiation. It spread to one lymph node in the neck, then spread to another lymph node in the neck. He no longer has his. His flappy thing? Flappy you mean thing. His, his epiglottis? Is that the floppy thing he and doesn't have? on Probably sick. Sick. Yeah. So it depends on what kind of surgery they did on his esophagus. He may be at this point, he may have to take the Prolosec long term. And uh, but now you need to watch my videos about proton pump inhibitors and uh, acid blocking medications because they keep you from absorbing many of the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. And so he needs to take extra supplements of those vitamins and minerals because he's having to take Prolosec long term. 
Michael, 52 year old male keto or oh, he's a young six months, a no fat loss, LDL 372, HDL 81, triglycerides 48, glucose 100, A1C 5.7. Any concerns? So you're pre diabetic, uh, but your HDL is great and your triglycerides are great. Uh, you've got to get that A1C down one more tenth of a percentage point and you are officially normal. Make sure next time the doc checks a fasting insulin and or a C peptide so that we know that you're not eating too many carbohydrates for your own body still. I recently just had a birthday and Nisha Salas Heifenberry knows how old I am, but I would love to see your guesses in the comments. How old do you think I am? Number one, how old do you think I act? Number two. Twelve. Don't give it away. <laughs> Jay, thanks for fighting the fight against what's considered standard of care. You can help more people with this than me. Oh, hey, thanks, you can Jay. help people too, Jay. You keep you keep teaching your friends and family how to do this. Thanks for the support. Ah, uh, Bonnie is in a really bad mood today. Yes. So if you hear her screaming bloody murder, someone is attending. She's her. in the closet. <laughs> Uh, Brian says, great talk with Dr. Palmer on Friday. Yeah, if any of you guys have a mental health issue or you love someone who has a mental health issue, you need to watch both of my interviews with Dr. Chris Palmer, who just wrote a new book called Brain Energy. And this, this book is going to change the way that psychiatry is practiced. Brain Energy. Uh, in both of those videos, I got a link straight to the Amazon page. There is an audible for those of you with ADHD. So, He's yes. Talking about himself. <laughs> uh, yes, All right. Let's see. Thank you so much. Organic, Organic beauty. beauty. Uh, Monica says, have you tried the brown butter bites for Nobody will make them for me. To eat or at bedtime to help with sleeping. A lot of people really, really loved the butter bites and utilized them and say that they really help them with cravings and uh, increasing their fat before mm -hmm. bedtime helps and them sleep better. See, I'm intrigued by that. I don't yeah. sleep terribly. She says I sleep like a corpse, well, but I feel like I don't corpse. sleep as well as I would like to. Like I'd like to get better sleep. And I've heard, many, I've heard many people say that these brown butter bites at bedtime help them sleep. And I'd love to try that, but I can't get anybody to make me any. So if any of you guys want to send me some. He's got two hands. Oh, is that how it is? Well, you do. Dr. Berry, is, is it okay to eat sugar-free ice cream? I think it's what ice she <laughs> When doing carnivore. So uh, almost every ice cream I've ever seen that's sugar-free is not really sugar-free. How I would make your own. Yes. So that involves like heavy cream, egg, egg yolks, yolks um, and, and that's it. You can add butter. <laughs> you can add butter yep. as well. And for it to be truly carnivore, that's where you would stop the ingredients. Yep. Uh, if you're going to be a little flexible, then you'd put a little vanilla in there and then some form of keto approved sweetener. But honestly, what would you put sweetener wise? Allulose. allulose. It makes it freeze properly. And uh, so that would be your best bet. Do yep. not buy the stuff on the shelf. First of all, it's super expensive. And, and most of it is really not that good. <laughs> uh, yeah, Holly melts them in silicone for a treat. The keto bricks. Hey, Kevin, Kevin thank, thank you. Thank you. Dal Dalton. Dalton. <laughs> hey, Doc. Starting 75 hard with carnivore as the diet. Awesome. In January, I do a lot of biking and MMA. Would I be fine not using the carbs even if I exercise a lot? Yeah, great question. Once you get completely keto adapted, which means that your body has revved up all the, the keto uh, beta hydroxybutyrate machinery and it's going full bore. Uh, we, we know people who run marathons routinely in ketosis with no carbs for the entire race. We know uh, well, I've got one friend who does the 100 mile crazy race, right? And he will carb up a little during his training, but during the run, he basically fasts and just burns his own body fat the entire 100 miles. He is indeed 54. 54 years old. Can you believe that? And I act 12. You're right. That's exactly Absolutely right. Excellent. Somebody said I look 38. Go back and put that one up there. <laughs> Dad says, Can body inflammation cause your A1C mm -hmm. to go up? A1C is a measure of glycation. That's when sugar that you ate in your diet sticks to the proteins of your cells and tissues. So inflammation sort of indirectly might raise your cortisol. That might raise your glucose. That might cause, but not much. The vast majority of glycation is caused by 
the carbohydrates you put in your face. Oh, he, I didn't know th that it was good to use for that. Yes, you did. Ke I've literally have done, you done that. that? Yes. <laughs> oh, keto chow. I thought they said keto brick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Stephanie uh, person says brown butter is no good. Really? I, but she I loves love the high taste fat. Of it. I would have thought she'd been totally I love the, pro I love brown the taste butter. Of it. Okay, I'm done. Take back over. <laughs> All right, Jeanette says, I've upped my fat. Now I feel quite bloated. Stop tracking macros. Carbs are below 10 grams a day. No sweeteners in my drinks. Any thoughts, Mary Christmas? Are you 10 total grams of carbs or 10 net carbs? Because that's important. Make sure you're talking about 10 total grams of carbs. Uh, fat m Increasing your fat might cause a few days of bloating, but it's not going to cause many because the gut bacteria that, that cause bloating and gas they hate fat. They're, they're going to pack their bags and leave, and you're going to have the nice skinny bacteria left. Randy says, Dr. Kills has a carnivore ice cream recipe. Yep. Yeah, but he puts sugar in he put, his. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I would recommend the allulose. Yeah, and he, he's promoting that ice cream for women who are trying to get pregnant as well. So. Uh, Christian uh, says, eczema follow-up here. Is there a chance she could have candida buildup? If so, is it dangerous on organs to go carny and release too many toxins too quickly? So think this through, Christian. If she has toxins stored in her body, which she probably doesn't, you want to get rid of those as quickly as possible, right? You don't want toxins stored in your body, but she probably doesn't have that. Uh, but she might have a little buildup of candida on her skin. Some people have a dramatic eczematous reaction to candida. But here's the beautiful thing about carnivore is it lowers your blood sugar so much, which is going to lower the sugar in your entire system that can you stop tasting good to funguses like candida and they just pack their bags and leave. Marnie says the butter bites have dramatically helped my sleep, yet they make me feel alert if I eat them during the day. It's almost like butter is good for you. Huh. Insert sarcasm here. How many people think butter is just empty fat calories? But if you currently think that, I got a YouTube video about butter, but also you're just, uh, you're wrong. Butter is full of vitamins and minerals and tons of healthy fatty acids. Uh, Carney Girl says, FYI, my hubby didn't have surgery for his esophageal cancer. God healed him. We've watched your videos on this. Thank you for all you guys do. I'm down 70 pounds. Huzzah! Uh, all blood numbers. Uh, excellent. And my hubbies are too. Double, double huzzah. Love it. Uh, little Sister Sue. Uh, one, I have Hashimoto's and CHF. I don't have CHF, but I do have Hashimoto's. Been low carb eight months, lost 62 pounds. How do I ask my PCM with stopping of the Synthroid? Can I stop a cold turkey? And two, what are the other labs needed when doing total LDL cholesterol? When total and LDL cholesterol yeah. are high. So you may never be able to stop your thyroid hormone replacement. I wish you'd get your doctor to switch you over to Armor or Nature or WP or NP, one of the natural desiccated thyroid hormones replacements. Uh, but don't stop at cold turkey. You need to work with your doctor and have labs checked. Uh, Nisha was able to come off of her thyroid replacement hormone, uh, but she did that working very closely with her healthcare provider. She didn't just stop that cold turkey. Yes, I did. The, well, you talked to her. <laughs> you, the, we don't advise that. I, don't, I said don't do that. Don't do that. I did it. Uh, but now the other labs you need, you need an A1C, a fasting insulin, and or a C peptide. You need your triglycerides checked and an HDL in addition to the total and LDL cholesterol. To be fair, we were all in lockdown and I couldn't really go. That is true. So. That is true. You could have zoomed. I could have. She's just yeah. hard headed. I'm a nurse and we just do things on our own sometimes. Worst patients, worse than doctors. Oh. No, no. It's not, it's not worse <laughs> Ivan says, it's carnivore diet good for my mother. She has kidney failure, fluid retention, diabetes, and high blood pressure in the hospital right now. What advice can you give me to help her? Yeah. Question, so, and, so uh, what questions should I ask the doctors? So, anywhere on the proper human diet spectrum, if she wants, to, if she's like, no, son, I want to eat some vegetables, then let her be keto. She can have meat. She can have eggs with the yolk. She can have some vegetables and a few nuts and a few berries. If she's happy eating nothing but meat, meat a carnivore diet is part of a proper human diet spectrum. It is fine. What the reason she has kidney failure is probably from diabetes or from a medication she took, neither of which. It wasn't caused by meat, in other words. It wasn't caused by eggs. So definitely she can eat that way. Of course, clear this with her doctor. And don't try to push this on her. You let mom make up her own mind. 
All right. Dalton says, thank you so much. Also, do you have any tips on avoiding the keto flu? Yeah. So first of all, I want you guys all to realize that keto flu is actually carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. And once you look at it that way, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, so if I'm withdrawing off an addictive substance, I'm probably going to have a few days of withdrawal. Yes, you are. But with that being said, you can increase your salt intake, increase your electrolyte intake, bump up your fat intake, and eat. Don't portion control. Eat until you're comfortably stuffed. That's going to help lessen the severity of the carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. Fly worldwide. Ooh, thank you, thank fly you. worldwide. <laughs> Reminds me of the Step Brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what just happened? Says, yeah. any recommendations for organ meat yes, capsules? Yes, I have a, a good recommendation for organ meat capsules. Don't waste your money on them, okay? Learn to eat liver. Cod liver, chicken liver, beef liver, sheep's liver, goose liver. Livers have different flavors. Some you won't like, some you'll love. When Nisha makes chicken livers with her chicken nugget breading, Holy, that's not even the best way to eat liver. Oh, that's not. my favorite way, but she likes liver mousse and liver pate. No, what you do is you put your liver in your ground beef and you mix it up, or that, and you can't tell us yeah. there. Oh, did you guys yeah. go ahead? I'm sorry. I'm so also, sorry. this I'm is so an area that me and Dr. Berry have argued or disagreed about for several years. I don't think that it is completely necessary to eat those organs all the time mm, but I they are that. powerful foods yes. that are packed with nutrients yeah. and so if you can get them into your diet definitely do it with the real thing because 100%. a it's cheaper and b it's cheaper yeah most <laughs> most people will benefit from eating liver once or twice a week i don't think you have to slam liver every day or eat huge hunks of raw beef liver i don't think any of that's necessary i totally agree with those who say that i also don't believe that you're going to get vitamin A toxicity or any other toxicity from eating liver as our ancestors have done for millions and millions of years. Akron says, do you guys ever eat raw meat? Yes. Yeah, we do. We eat raw seafood and we eat steak tartare mm. a lot. Mm. And our steaks are usually blue rare. So I yes. mean, that's fairly close to raw. <laughs> Trish, uh, White female, 53-year-old, July 1st, had what appeared to be a stroke after MRIs and blood work and an EEG. Uh, it's Tumefactiv oh. MS. Uh, was a silver dollar lesion. Now is a quarter, I believe, thanks to full-blown carnivore. Dr. Barry, I am healing. That's it, Tish. Keep on keeping on. And, Tish, your, your story is very important. You know probably the just feeling of defeat with MS. You're like, that's I'm screwed. I'm done. That's it. It's over. Lights out. No, not necessarily. And so as you continue to heal and improve, you've got to not be shy, Tish. You've got to tell your story. You've got to get on social media and help other women and the men who have MS. Uh, Danielle says, what's up with PhD book, which I paid for? Well, I hope you didn't buy it from a weird website because there is no PhD book available. No, it's not available yet. <laughs> And there sure isn't a for sale page on any of our websites. No. So you might want to yeah. check that out. Yeah. All you guys, the proper human diet book is not available for sale yet. So and if there's also, a website out there, please report it to us. There is no meal plan by Dr. Barry for sale either. So mm -hmm. if you see that, that is also a scam we have seen and we have been trying to take care of that. But the internet is full of many people and it's hard to get people to stop doing crazy scammy things. So no Dr. Barry keto meal plan. Mm-mm. Doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. No. Nope. Here's your meal plan. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And that's that's for free. There you go. <laughs> Pete Davis, thank you. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Dewan says, starting my day with bone broth to treat SIBO, suspecting it's given me a little reflux recently, too much collagen for me, or just stick to my breastfed red meat, liver, and bone marrow regimen. I'm waiting for a Dr. Paul reply. Yeah, I think either way is fine. If you're drinking bone broth, make sure it's homemade bone broth. Don't just, and you're probably smart enough since you said these other things, you know better than this. But for those of you who don't know, buying bone broth or broth at the supermarket, that that is meaningless. That stuff is just salty brown water, okay? Bone broth is something you make in the pot on your stove. It takes hours. You don't have to stand there for hours, but it just has to slow simmer for many hours to get all the nutrients out of the bones, okay, and the bone marrow. So I can't imagine why it would be causing reflux. That's that's weird to one. But if you're doing great with the grass-fed uh, red meat and the bone marrow, and then once or twice a week add some liver, real liver, 
I think that's totally fine too. Either way, either way is, is going to be fine for you. Watch Autumn. Keto is in the house. Hey, Autumn. Hey, Autumn. Autumn has an awesome shop full of wonderful keto t-shirts and stuff like that. Mm. And she also makes the PhD t-shirts yep. for us, the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. There's so many. That's, we have long sleeve t-shirts now. They're really it's, comfy. It's uh, shopphd.com. Link it's in, in the, the show notes. Yeah, show notes. I'll just say description. You get all fancy. The show notes. Lan Lancelot, Camelot. Wow. Oh. Will lack of protein cause migraines? Probably not, Lancelot, but uh, I've got a couple of videos on this channel about migraines and what actually seems to be causing them. More than likely, it's hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation in certain parts of the brain, both of which are caused by improper pseudo foods in your diet. Uh, Stephen. Stephen. Steven, what can I do for panic attacks? I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, that sounds really Steven. crazy. <laughs> what can I do for panic attacks? Keto for seven months. All right, Steven, I had panic attacks, and what helped me the most was going really, really clean keto. No products, no products, no products. Real, real food, heavy on the meat, lots of animal fats. And uh, then I went carnivore for 90 days and that really helped too. But even just cleaning up my keto and making it real whole yep. food, what Dr. Westman likes to call prescription strength keto, yep. that really took care of it. And, and I didn't have a panic attack after that. And I haven't had one since. Although I've tried to instigate one. Every day. <laughs> my kids do. <laughs> uh, I think Pete had an actual question. Um, I just started two weeks ago on triple B and E. My ankles, especially my left ankle, has started to hurt in the last few days. Any advice? This is probably coincidental, Pete. There's nothing in beef, butter, bacon, and eggs that should make your ankle hurt. If it keeps getting worse, definitely go see your doctor. Uh, but my prediction is this is coincidental. You probably tweaked it when you weren't thinking about it, and it'll be better in a few days. AJ says, what's keto crotch? <laughs> keto crotch that's a fun story actually so there's this pasta company called barilla and they actually paid a, a pr firm i don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to write this article about keto crotch this is a couple three years ago now and then all the news media like newsweek and time and us and people, they all picked it up and ran with it because it was basically a free story that, that was very clickbaity. Like, holy shit, what's keto crotch? Oh my God, click. I got to read that. And it, it turns out it's literally something that was made up by a pasta company who was afraid their sales are going to suffer because keto was becoming quite popular. True story. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. If something yeah. does happen, it's a yeah. coincidence. Now keto that... butt crack on the other hand, no, no, I just Still made that up. Thing. Too. That's not a thing. Uh, Natasha, I'm worried about FDA approved lab grown meat. We might not know we are buying. Any mm. thoughts? Some say that's why they won't eat keto or carnivore. Oh, okay. But that's a really bad excuse. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> there, to, there's no, there, the FDA has said that it's safe to proceed or the USDA, somebody said it's safe to proceed with it. It doesn't appear inherently dangerous, but it's not on the market yet. It's, it's still several years from being on the market. And when when uh, lab-grown meat does come on the market, it's probably going to start out at somewhere between $10 and $50 a pound because they literally had to make it in a lab. It's going to be super expensive. So nobody's going to be slipping artificial meat into your cheap ground beef from uh, Costco or Sam's or Walmart or Kroger, okay, because they would be losing money if they did that. So buy the cheap beef. You always know that that's real beef. I just think it's funny that someone's using that excuse to not do it. Who you said that, Natasha? Before. Please tell us in the comments. Mod's Please been looking for her. That's the reason that you're not uh, doing it. Yeah, the reply from Natasha Love. Who's been saying that? I want to I want to see that. Christopher. And I feel like we do that. If you have a name that's been on any TV show that we can. What show is that from? 50-year-old male who wants to try carnivore, but yep. has recurring kidney stones and is worried about the effects of oxalate dumping. Yeah. So if you have a lot of inappropriate oxalate stored in your body, Christopher, I know you don't want kidney stones, but son, you need to get rid of the excess stored unhealthy oxalates, right? So go carnivore. I've got a video about kidney stones that might help you with this. Kidney stones are effectively caused by chronic inappropriate inflammation and by hyperinsulinemia and a high oxalate diet. Those three things are what cause calcium oxalate stones. Now there's other forms of 
urolithiasis than that. But that's by far the most common one. Go carnivore. And if you have one more kidney stone attack and then never have another one, I think that's a good investment. Kevin got it. Kevin Chiam says Sopranos. That's the, the one. Sopranos. That's the one. <laughs> Fully laden Soprano. swallow. Welcome back. I swear you two are glowing so brightly. I have to put on my sunglasses. Question. Aww. Is there a reliable test for leaky gut? No. No, there's, there's really not. Uh, you, I guess you could have a small bowel biopsy, but I don't know any gastroenterologist who's going to do that. In many ways, leaky gut is a real thing, but in many ways, it's kind of a, it's a model. It's kind of a paradigm of how we talk about a, a gut that's been damaged by highly processed inflammatory foods. Uh, in theory, it does exist, but I don't know any GI doc who's going to biopsy your small intestine. What are your thoughts on Monjuro? Uh, so if you'll eat a proper human diet, I think that Monjuro is completely and totally unnecessary and a waste of your time and money. Uh, is carnivore good for someone with Parkinson's? Absolutely. So Parkinson's, all the dementias, including Alzheimer's, Lou Gehrig's disease, many of these neurological conditions respond almost miraculously to a a strict, pure carnivore diet. And I'm not saying it's going to cure it. I'm saying that the, the degree of lessening of the symptoms, the degree of frequency of the of the flare-ups might blow you away, Letha. So I would definitely look into it and maybe even give it a try. Jennifer, uh, since I have cardiac microvascular disease, how do I know if it's also in my lungs and or brain? You don't know for sure, but what we have to assume as a, as a doctor, I would assume that if you have it in your heart, you probably also have it in all the organs of your body. That would be the kind of the rational assumption. Uh, that sounds terrible, but here's the good news. It, you can stop the progression of that and you can probably reverse the progression of that by adopting and sticking to a proper human diet for the rest of your life. Thank you. Hey, Tyreek. thanks, Tyrek. Tyrek, Tyreek. It's one of those always. Dalton says makes uh, much sense. Why are carbs so addictive to us? Because in the wild, a hundred thousand years ago, there's really two reasons. So first of all, babies got to suck milk or they'll die. A newborn baby's got to suck milk, and so there's carbohydrates, there's sugar in the milk. That's why there's sugar in all mammalian milk, as far as we know is so that the babies get that endorphin hit, okay? And they get the queso, quesomorphine hit. And they're like, oh, yeah. Have you ever seen a baby after they've suckled at the loving breast of their mother? They're just like, ha, oh, oh, ha, oh, oh. ha, ha. That's just what Bonnie does in it, like that, ha, oh. ha, okay? They're high on, on booby milk sugar. That's number one. Number two, in the fall, late summer, fall, we need to put on weight because winter's coming. And so when all the berries and fruits get ripe, we eat the hell out of them so we can gain 5, 10, 15 pounds of protective fat. And back in the wild, that was very good to gain 5 or 10 pounds in the late summer or fall so that you wouldn't starve to death during the winter. And so uh, evolution gave us this addiction, this like craving for sugar. It's much stronger in some of us than in others. Some people don't, or don't really crave sugar at all. Others of us, We'll, we'll be going through the cabinets at 9 p.m. looking for just something. Just some, I need a little something. Yeah. It must be nice. I'm sure glad you acted that out for everybody. Jennifer, I'm gaining almost 50 on carnivore. Should I cut back on fat? Do you mean you're gaining and you're almost 50 or you gained 50 pounds? Yeah, Jennifer, carnivore? if you've gained 50 pounds on carnivore, it's definitely not carnivore. You need to go see your doctor immediately. Something, Something's bad wrong. You've got a tumor. You've got some kind of inborn error, error of genetic metabolism. Something's bad wrong. You need to go see your doctor if you've truly gained 50 pounds on carnivore. You'll be the first person I've ever 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 seen do that in all the tens of thousands of people i don't think people. that's what i think she I i'm gaining comma almost 50 on carnivore should i go back on fat i think is how that sentence mm. meant to be read yeah, fat so doesn't make read you it. fat let's read okay it we'll read way. it that way now <laughs> fat doesn't make you fat okay that's a common myth it, they rhyme fat rhymes with fat so you think oh well eating fat must make me fat <laughs> it doesn't work that way is it rhyming if it's the same word well it sounds the same <laughs> Oh, thanks, Kimberly. Uh, 
Sammy, Anna, can I do this with graves and no thyroid with men? Yes, Sammy. Even though you don't have a thyroid, you are still a human being and you're going to benefit from all of the hundreds of benefits of a proper human diet. Yes, the age is 50. That's what she meant. All right. That's what I thought. All right. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Cat. Hey, cat. Been carnivore since September 1st. Not a speck of sugar since then, yet my blood glucometer is still showing numbers between 170 and 190. Unmedicated at this time, I was on insulin. Yep. So, Kat, you probably need to talk to your doctor about getting on either glucophage, metformin, or going to the health food store and getting some berberine. Uh, you didn't tell me your A1C. I'd love to have known that in your fasting insulin, but you're probably still pre-diabetic. You probably are still healing your metabolism. So in other words, you're not there yet. You're making progress, but you're just not where you want to be yet. Keep the carbs super, super low. And remember that all carbs break down into sugar. So even if you're not having eaten a speck of sugar, if you're eating anything with starch in it, that breaks down into sugar, right? If you're eating any fruit whatsoever, including berries, they're full of sugar. Sorry, but they are. I love them. I love them. And when the blueberries are mm. ripe next year, I'll eat some, but I'm not going to eat them every day. So I would, if I were you, cat, I would go 90 days, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and then get your numbers rechecked. And I think you'll be very happy with the improvement. I'm doing a poll in the comments. I want to see y'all vote. Okay. All right. Gail says, FYI, if you live in the middle Tennessee area, w Williamson Medical Center only charges 65 bucks for a coronary artery calcium score. And I bet you don't have to have your doctor's order either, do you, Gail? You just go to the imaging center at Williamson Medical Center. All right, That's so a good medical facility. The poll the says, I ate fat and I lost weight. So if you ate high fat and you lost weight, I want you to hit yes. And if you ate high fat and you didn't lose weight, hit no. Very easy. Just click yes or no. All right. And then at the end, we'll see how it is. We'll see what's going on. Who wins? Ooh, is vegan crotch a real thing? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Stop, stop. I don't know if it's real. I'm scared now. Thanks, Fly, Thanks, Fly World. Why? Uh, Bays? I eat medium rare steaks. Is cow's blood bad for me? Probably not. There's um, not really much blood left in yeah, the yeah. steak. Yeah, they drain the, the, the cows very thoroughly before they cut the steaks, but there are many cultures who still eat quite a bit of blood. When we were in London, we had blood sausage. It was delicious. Uh, there are some religious uh, prohibitions and some religions against eating blood. Not everybody adheres to that, though. So uh, blood is very nutrient dense. If you want to eat it, I think it's fine. If you don't, I think that's fine. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry. Thank you so much. Fly Worldwide blowing us up. Love Thank it. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. Heather. Hey, Heather. Well, you're stinking computer. On 1025 calorie program, lost weight, type 2 to pre-diabetic, but I'm hungry all the time. How can I change to carnivore without gaining my weight back? So this is the classic diet that Heather's following. She's basically starving herself to death. And you will lose weight doing that, but she's hungry all the time. No human can continue that forever. And the beautiful thing about a carnivore diet, Heather, is you get to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. And I've done, people, thousands of people have done my beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. <clears throat> and they didn't lose, they didn't gain any weight. They're like, I guarantee you, if I can eat all the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs I want, eat till I'm full, I'll get big as a house. Guess what? At the end of the 90 days, they lost weight. Heather, it might benefit you to hire a coach or join a group. Kim Howerton works a lot with women just like you who've eaten low calorie and are, are stressed out about eating and gaining more weight. Mm -hmm. She's very, very experienced. So you could look into hanging out with Kim. She Absolutely. does lives on YouTube for free. You can talk to her. I think her live is on Tuesdays yep. um, on She's her YouTube channel. Resource. It's Kim Howerton. So I would go hang out on Kim's channel mm. and ask her some questions because I think she could really help you. Also follow Kay Kelly Hogan on YouTube because she was kind of in your same boat and she's not anymore. Stephanie. Hey, from Florida. Heart attack two years ago. Six stints. I'm on Plavix. Is that okay? Was on a Trovastatin, but I quit four weeks ago. I am doing carnivore. Yeah. The research currently shows that you're probably benefiting from the Plavix more than you're at danger of a side effect because any pill you put in your mouth, you're at, this is, it's absolutely a, a loss gain ratio, a plus minus ratio. There are some side effects, 
and there is a benefit. What you want is for the benefit to outweigh the side effects. And in your case, it probably does. Uh, Kimberly would love suggestions for keto lunches for school. I assume you mean for your kids. Yeah. Um, go follow our good friend, House of Keto, Abby. She posts almost every single day. On what TikTok she, and Instagram. On TikTok, Instagram, and maybe on YouTube now. Maybe she has shorts. What she packs her kids uh, for lunch. And she is keto, and that would be great inspiration. She has so many <coughs> ideas. Uh, just don't overcomplicate it, honestly. Just meet and a little veg, some berries if they're into berries, some and nuts. some nuts. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's, the keep it simple. The lunches that Abby packs for her children, although they tend to inflame people on <laughs> Instagram and TikTok, they're very nutrient dense. They're very, very healthy lunches for her kids. And I've actually met her, her oldest child, her daughter, and she claims that these lunches are also delicious and that very often the other kids try to trade their highly processed junk for her keto lunch. And she says, mm -mm, I don't think so. Angela, did triple B&E two meals a day since May? Now body fat is at 22%, lean mass 105 pounds, fat, free fat mass 111 pounds, 63-year-old grandma with cerebral palsy. I'd have to know your actual body weight to know if those numbers are good or bad. Yeah. Uh, AM, how worried should we be for... You yeah, that. methyl glyoxal. This is the latest thing that the... That the vegans are trying to trying to scare everybody with. Uh, the, I think one study mentions this, maybe one or two, and this is by no means proven science. This is a theoretical concern, mm. kind of like TMAO or new GC GC six. It's like one of those, like, oh my god, you're methylglyoxal. No, uh, Michael Greger is grasping at straws because it's becoming quickly apparent that a vegan diet does not reverse heart disease. There is no research that shows that. It does not help people with type 2 diabetes. It might lower their A1C a few tenths of a percent, but a vegan diet never reverses type 2 diabetes. I've yet to see a single case. And so there's, they always pull some dangerous sounding word out of their hat and say, this is the reason. Uh, so yeah, the it, eating glycation in products in your diet, that's not what you need to worry about. You need to worry about your body forming advanced glycation in products from the foods that you eat. That's the danger. Hey dog, going to have total hip replacement next week. How should I prepare for my surgery? I'm ketovore and worried about the antibiotics and the pain medication. Yeah, I would do ketovore right up until the day. And then after the surgery, I'd fast for 24, 48 hours. Just sip on some bone broth, sip on some some fluids, and give you that'll that'll help ramp up your body, your body's healing uh efficiency and healing rate. Yolanda says you guys are goofy to know. Right? Aren't we always though? I am. You're not. R.N. Smith. Good evening to you both. I'm ready to change from carnivore to ketovore since I lost 30 pounds already. I'm Huzzah. wanting to start incorporating some veggies, nuts, which are the best ones. Yeah. Which ones are your favorite? That's a and good that's start. the ones you need to incorporate. Now, don't just go full force all in. Incorporate one food at a time over a few days and then keep up with how you feel mm -hmm. going over this in the challenge in our uh, private community. This is part of it. And so you, what you're going to do is maybe cashews are your favorite nuts. So on day one of reintroducing foods, you're going to add a few cashews, like half of a handful. See how you feel over the next 24 hours. Skip a day, do it again. See how you feel over the next 24 hours. And if nothing happens, cashews like you back. Congratulations. Yep. And you'll find that there are some keto friendly foods that you thought liked you back that don't like you back after your carnivore challenge. There are keto-friendly foods that may not necessarily be you-friendly foods. And yep. so that's the point of 90 days of triple B&E or 90 days of carnivore as an elimination diet to differentiate which ones are uh, niche-friendly and which ones are not niche-friendly. Yep. You know, for, insert your name. <laughs> for example, I love cashews. That's my favorite nut. And every now and then, maybe once a, a week, once a month, I'll have some cashews. And they do not seem to bother me at all. I, I know the oxalate and lectin count. I know, I've looked it all up. But it does not seem to bother me. But almonds, pistachios, although I used to like them, uh, and peanuts, forget it. 
peanuts are not really a real nut, but uh, uh, bloating, inflammation, no, no, no. So far, 761 of you have voted, and 88% said you ate high fat and lost weight. Funny. So that's <laughs> 700 people that ate high fat and lost weight. Hmm. Fat does Maybe not make you fat. Maybe it's not the fat. Maybe it's more than that. Fat does not make you fat. Maybe it's lifestyle, lack of sleep, stress management. For carbs. You're missing the point that I'm making. Okay. But thank you for that. Thank you. Thank well, you. you. What, what? Let's assume they're not eating a lot of carbs. Flame Emperor. Can keto carnivore help with? Alopecia areata. So this is typically an autoimmune condition, but it can be caused by other things as well. Make sure you see a dermatologist for this and they look at you with their little magnifying uh, ocule because there are other causes for this as well. But if it is autoimmune in nature, most people notice on carnivore that it, it becomes much less severe and less noticeable. Sorry. Lot. Ketovore, uh, keto carnivore 10 months dropped a chunk of firewood on my foot. It went from just sore right into a gout attack. That's happened twice. Do I have hidden inflammation? No, you don't have hidden information, inflammation. It's very obvious that you have acute onset inflammation from dropping a stick of wood on your foot that can precipitate a gout attack if you are susceptible. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I don't think you had hidden, hidden inflammation or you'd have been having just random gout flare-ups for no reason. But when you drop a stick of wood on your foot, it's going to be sore. We just, we oh, that. Marnie, Merry Christmas, oh, Granny Berry, Marnie from Mac. Toronto. You guys, my 92-year-old grandmother's watching this. She's with my parents in Alabama right now. Could you say hi to Granny Berry and where you're watching from? She just loves it when you do that. Hey, Amy. Thank you. Organic beauty, trying to heal from severe papulopustular rosacea. So I, I actually have or had rosacea, but I didn't have the papulopustular. I got a, I got one or two little bumps. It was starting, but that's about the same time I started keto. My rosacea went virtually away. And then on carnivore, I, you can't even tell I have it anymore. I can't even mm -hmm. wash my face without being on antibiotics, doing ketovore. How can I gain a few pounds? Uh, so if you want to gain muscle, then you're going to lift weights. If you want to gain fat, then you eat more carbohydrates. That's how that works. But if you want to keep the papulopustular rosacea minimized, I would stay carnivore and eat and lift heavy weights and put on some nice, sexy muscle. Glenn says, a fourth of a cup of cashews is 10 grams of carbs. How does that fit with ketovore? That, that is not part of ketovore. That is part of reintroduction of foods as combined with an elimination diet. The yep. point of that part isn't to be on any sort of diet. It's to know how your body is reacting to certain foods. Right. Cashews. So you can't just <coughs> lick one. It right? may sound so sometimes work. like we have a one-track mind, but we're actually considering multiple variables at the same time with these challenges and these different diets. Mm -hmm. It's The carbohydrate count is very important. But it's not everything. There also is the infl inflammation angle. You got to think about that as well. And after an elimination diet, you got to know: does this cause inflammation? Does this cause bloating? Does this cause a reaction in me or not? The only way to know is to eat that. Yes, that's the point of an elimination diet, yes. is so that you can get that knowledge. And you can't get that knowledge if you don't reintroduce the food. And you can't reintroduce the food unless you put it in your mouth. And see where I'm going here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to eat. Cashews every day. No. Just means you need to know, yes or no, can I eat those? Kevin King, been ketoboard for three and a half months, lost 20 pounds so far. And I'm, not, I'm not hungry that much. I still cheat on the weekends with soda. Please don't yell at me. Grow up. No, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. No, you're doing a great job as long as, and I'm not anti-diet soda unless you're stalled for three months or longer, and then it's time to get rid of the diet soda. Now, there are many gurus out there who say, Soda, first of all, it's made by Coca-Cola or Pepsi. These guys are not our friends. They don't love us. They don't care about our health. They just don't want to kill us too quickly that attorneys might be able to sue for. So I don't trust them. That's why I stopped drinking soda. But I love the taste of soda. Every now and then I'll have a Diet Dr. Pepper. We'll split it, and then we leave some in the can because we, don't, we used to drink liters of it a day. Now we'll drink two sips and be like, yeah, I'm done with that. But uh, I'm not anti-diet soda if what you're doing is working, Kevin King. So as long as you keep losing weight and your inflammation is getting better, keep having your soda on the weekend, diet soda. But if you stall or you start having problems, that'd be one of the very first things I would eliminate. All right. The ending result of the poll, 871. 
874 votes. 87% of you said, I ate high fat and I lost weight. 13% said no. So that's a, that's pretty good. That's uh, difference. over 800 yeah, that's people lot. didn't get fat from eating <laughs> fat. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to hop off here, but if you want to hang out with me and Dr. Barry some more, you can come hang out in our private community. Link in description. We do lots of lives in there, challenges, hang out. Yep. There's lots of people that are going through the same stuff that you're going through. It's just a big ball of support over there. Absolutely. So if he wants to continue on, he's more yep. than welcome to. But I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. And so if you had questions tonight and we didn't, we weren't able to answer your question, that's how you get your question answered because we're going to do another live just like this tomorrow at 6 p.m. inside of our private community. And instead of 2,900 people watching and asking questions, there will be 100 people. So I have much more time to answer every single question and answer questions much more completely in our private community. So if you're not already a member, please consider that. It, it, five dollars a month what you, what is your health worth that i don't know you tell me all right guys i'm out of here thanks so much for hanging out with us we'll see you either tomorrow at 6 p.m or next monday night at 7 p.m central love you mean it <laughs>